Hello there, my beautiful book lovers. My name is Camille and welcome to my book talk. Today we're going to have a sort of a wrap up of the summer. We are coming to a close with the summer and it has been a very fun one, at least for me. I hope you all have been enjoying your summer. We have been having a very good weather in New England this year at least. Um, there were some weeks of a little bit of rain, a little bit of humidity, but overall it has been very lovely and I was able to really go outside and enjoy the summer. I tried to keep it a little bit quiet when it comes to um, doing activities like reading and staying indoor and things of that sort and do more stuff outdoor with nature, music and whatnot. Um, but overall, I was still able to read some very fun books. I actually um, finish a series that I really wanted it. And so anyway, we're just going to have a very casual video just reviewing some books and um, looking back at the summer. Um, I'm very looking forward to fall and winter because as much as I enjoyed and love summer, my favorite really is fall and winter because I love cold and I love to stay in drawer and just read, um, watch movies, watch shows and just enjoy the, like, the quiet, dark and <laughs> cold weather. So anyway, um, while I'm excited for all of those, let's just focus on the summer. This summer, actually, the main thing that I did was that I read the Demonada series by Darren Chan. This is a series that I have talked about before. Um, it's a series that I read when I was, what, like 7th, 8th grade, maybe? Even maybe ninth, because like it was one of those books and like series that it was coming out uh, while I was reading it. So I'm pretty sure I finished the last book when I was like actually in 11th or 10th grade. So it's been a while, but um, because it was one of those series that really shaped me into a person that I am today when it comes to loving books and fantasies. And so because of that, I always had such a special space um, in my heart, just sitting there on its own in Snook. Um, and because of that, this summer, I was like, you know what? It's a really like, it was a really the good time to go back because this series, it's 10 books and they're pretty short, um, at least like in my opinion, they're very easily um, to get through. But still being 10 books, I wanted to have a, like a good chunk of time to read them all. And that's what I did this summer. And I'm so happy that it's one of those books and series that it still holds. Um, because you know how when you used to like read some books and love them, when you go back to them, like, I don't know, in five years, 10 years, eight years, whatever. Um, some of them are, you're like, yeah, no, that's like really specific for that age group. And it's not that like they're bad per se, but it's just like that they don't really lure you in anymore. But uh, with this series, it's still phenomenal, honestly. It was um, one of those that like, yes, it had moments that I was like, oh yeah, like now I can see that like now that I'm an adult. Um, I can be like, okay, like maybe this part could have been like, you know, cut or whatever. But when I look at it as like a person in that age, like a teenager reading these books, still enjoying it very much. So if you're a person that likes, um, I didn't say anything about this book because like, I feel like I have talked about it before so many times. Uh, so the series is actually about, um, we have three main characters and, um, we have these characters that they're in a world that like in our world but it is connected to demons universe and so they're able to like come not easily not all of them but still like some of them can and then like you know demons being demons they like come and just like they they hate us you know they want to like kill everybody and everything and um it is a very fascinating series honestly i at least feel that like the characters very well done. The story, the plot is very there. And I like um, that even though like horror, it's really not a genre that I read. And it's really funny because like the like these books uh, were one that again started me into getting to become a like a, a bookworm. Um, but despite the fact that how much I enjoyed them, they never really like push me towards horror. If anything, they really push me towards fantasy because as much as like with the demons and the killings and the gore, and it, there's like a lot of gore and blood and all of that, um, they're like still to me at least more 
fantasy and not horror because like the demons are the type that like they just hate us and they want to kill us so there is like blood and not the type that like hate us but they want to possess us and like do other stuff those are like horror and I don't really like those um and so with this series um you get all of that and if you like those story or of stories you should give it a try it was a, like a fantastic sort of uh going back and like looking back and like remembering things because especially because like since it has been such a long time there were parts that I didn't fully remember and then when I was reading it it was like not just a reminder of like oh this was like this part and everything but I also like remember specifically that when I read at like a certain point um that like the next day I went to school because like me and one of my friends we were like reading these books like non-stop and um I went to school and and our reaction because like we were reading it together so like we just walked in and <laughs> looking at each other so we knew that we have read that part and everything so it was like really just lovely to relive all of those memories so anyway it's a fantastic series and fantastic books um and if you're interested in that I'm repeating myself um you have to give it a try then um alongside while i was like reading these books i also like listened and read some other books some of them were good some of them were like whatever and since this is like a sort of a, like a just looking back at books i don't want to go over like all of them again i didn't read that many or as much books as i usually do because this year in general because of everything that i have going on i didn't want to really focus on a like a big number of books that i want to finish um, so I was taking it a little bit easy, but still, um, I got some done. One of them that was very lovely and sort of like touched my heart. Um, it was actually Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, um, I think. Forgive me for pronouncing wrong. Um, this book, it's a romance actually. And it's one of those romance that I was not sure because like I am very... I don't want to say picky but I'm like really hard to please when it comes to romance because like I'm really like looking for a specific sort of a romance most of the time and so with this one I was not sure if it's going to do it for me or not and it did it just so good um this book it's actually the the reason that I loved it it's because going back to um some of my favorite romances that I have read and like one of them like well not one like but, but, but an author that I love it's like Emily Henry or even like Jane Austen um it's that like the stories are very easy to read easy to follow and also believable um for their time period because they're very different um and with this book it's also like very similar to that because this book um we are looking at a person that it is a very normal flawed person um and even the character i'm forgetting their name what was their name it was justin and emma how can i forget these two names they're so like common anyway um so justin and emma they are two people that they have this sort of they believe they have this sort of curse that like any time that they date a person it doesn't go well and then the person that that like date will go to date they end up what like if Justin is dating girl A they're just going to break up it's not gonna work and then the girl A like immediately after is going to meet the love of her life and the same is going on with Emma and so they sort of come across one another and they decide to date each other to sort of like um be like well you know two negative equals uh like a positive so to kind of like counter curse each other and so that's how the story starts and everything and um with this book i enjoyed it because it's first of all it's a very easy to follow story but it's because like the characters they felt very real they had like, real issues um, they had like real lives, you know, like you can feel that mundaneness of like everyday life that we're all going through it and everything that we are struggling with in different ways. And um, it was one of those books that I was like, 
okay, I, I can get with this. And like, as the story goes, you start to love every single character more and more in different ways. And because of that, I enjoyed it very much. It was like such a perfect summer sort of a book, especially because like, you know, just with like, just for the summer being the name, it was like really just for the summer. I mean, you can enjoy it anytime, but still it was very lovely. And it was a book that made me to appreciate um, the genre of romance even more. Because like one of the reasons that sometimes I have a hard time with romance is just like, I'm like, okay, this is like, like going to the, like the territory of fantasy <laughs> and like it's too far away from fiction because I could never see this happening in real life. Um, but with this book, it really was lovely. I love the characters. I love the everything about it. Like, honestly, it's a great book. If you're looking for a romance, it's not just for the summer and you can like push it in, you know, I'd like to, to read it like right before the summer being like the, at the end of it and everything. So it was a lovely book. I enjoyed it very much. And then um, let's let's start with this one first, because there is like two books that I want to talk about um, that sort of stand out. Um, one of them was The Era of Venus by Laura Shepperson. So this book, um, because now we're in this um, sort of era with retelling of Greek mythology, there's a lot of them out there and it's very hard to find good ones. Um, not that they're bad, but like good ones because like we have good ones, we have okay ones, and then, then we have the, like, the, the, the ones that it's just like, no. Um, and I feel I started, well, I always was very like into Greek mythology, but, um, with retelling, it has started it with the song of Achilles because like, I think that was like actually one of the, like the first retelling of like the, like the, like the, the sort of this era that like the, all of a sudden it boomed and a lot of different retelling were coming out. I think that was really the one that like forced it um not forced it but like sort of pushed uh, to go for that amount of like retelling coming out and I obviously loved Song of Achilles I cried so much so much um and then I read some other books and again they were like pretty good but it was like Song of Achilles and then it was was it early this year or was it last year time is flying by I read Clemenestra and that one then it became like it is Clemenestra now and so it has been sort of hard to find a book that top Clemenestra which like I'm not complaining I enjoyed that book so much that I wanted to stay number one forever I don't care it will stay like don't get me wrong don't think that Song of Achilles is not number one it is now they're sharing it so anyway um with this book it is okay, it was good, but it was not as good as I wanted it to be because it really had the potential to be great, to really reach that level of like retelling that I want to like really just be like, this is it, a new favorite. This one was not bad. I think I give it three star if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, so again, like three and a half. It, it was pretty good. Um, I enjoyed it. It was one of those stories that again, because with a lot of the retellings, you sort of go back to Trojan War, that being like one of the main. Um, so this book also like a portion of it because they like the character that we are like um, focusing on, um, like son of Venus. Um, that's the reason like he was in the Trojan War and because of that like we're looking at that portion also we are looking at other stuff and it was very funny for me because um for one of the characters they are um re related to Hector and Hector is one of those characters that it's like you know like it's really depending on who's or like what side of the story you're listening to you can be like well Hector what did you do and then, or you can read it from this point of view and be like, oh, you poor Hector, you, you poor thing. And so because of that, that was a reason that it sort of stayed with me, even though the book in general was not like something that I would give it like a high ranking, but 
it was good enough to sort of make it to the list of memorable books of this summer for me. So anyway, it was a good book. If you are looking for retelling, you can give it a try. Honestly, it was good enough to, you know, cut it for like a quick read. Then the last book of the summer, this is the like the literally the last book that I like finished it. And that is The Myth of Normal Trauma, Illness and Healing in a Toxic Culture by Gabor Mate and Daniel Mate. So this book, which is a nonfiction, obviously, um, I loved it so much. It is a book that really, as I've mentioned, um, it's about this myth of normal, that how we have normalized different sort of behavior, different sort of beliefs or whatever um, that are not normal, that are not natural to us as human beings. And we are just doing them because of the fact that the toxic environment, which is the society and like in a general, like the world, you know, that we're living in has created the sense of what is normal and what is not normal. And I enjoyed this book so much because um, for a portion, it is like different sections and it's focusing on different things, but they're all related to one another as you're moving from one section to another. Um, but like a portion of it was talking about mental illness and it was talking about how the not to say normalization of mental illness, but to normalize how we sort of see a symptom, even like with doctors, it's not even about like you diagnosing things for your own selves, but like in a sense of like, when you go and see a doctor, they see a symptom and they're like, oh yeah, like 100% definitely you have this illness. Um, while this book was really focusing, and I have to mention that, um, Gaber, um, Gaber, 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 I believe it's Gaber. I'm sorry, the, like the author. Um, he is a doctor, he has been a doctor for like decades. And so he, he is very knowledgeable about what he's talking about. And so he was talking about how with the brain, especially it's something that you cannot really um, evaluate it in a sense of other illnesses because like you know with like if you have a broken arm or anything you go take a like a you know city a scan and x-ray and they can see it they can literally see it and they're like this is what the issue and that's a, like the same with any other illness of the like the physical body when it comes to like cancer flu anything there's always like an actual evidence there that you can really point to and say that that's it but with mental illness, it's never there. And it's really hard to pinpoint it. And it's not that it doesn't exist or it's like a myth. It's absolutely not that. But it's that like how much um, we have to sort of look at a bigger picture and going back to the environment more than like to be like, oh, like you have this one single thing. Okay, so you have depression. Okay, you have like anxiety and not really look at like what is causing it? What is it? And is it actually that? Or is it something that like because of you being in that environment, it's like, you know, um, makes you to believe that that's something that you have it. So anyway, it was a fantastic book. It was a nice book to sort of wrap up the summer with, to sort of like, have a different point of view moving to the next um, sort of portion of the year with the fall and winter coming along and being like dark and gloomy. And as much as I love it, I cannot deny that sometimes it can get like sad and depressing. So it was good to sort of have this knowledge moving forward. So yeah, those were pretty much the main books and series and everything that I read. I really am looking forward to reading or rereading some other series for fall and also for winter. Um, I'm really hoping to, I, I do have some in mind. I'm not sure which one I'm going to pick. Um, but I'm looking forward to, for this year in general, I have been like rereading some of my favorites simply because I've been very just in the mood to go back to the books that I have loved. And um, not that there have not been that many good, good new books, because obviously clearly some of these books, um, they've been new. But um, this year I have been not as like as much as like last year looking forward to like books and so I thought that it would be the great time to sort of 
reread books and like make um a good case for myself at least and that why I have all of these books because like a lot of times like my parents or friends they're like why do you own all of these books you can just like you know <laughs> join a library and that would be all or get like you know audiobooks and stuff and even though I listen to audiobooks sometimes I really do want to have the books that I love and so by rereading I'm like see this is the reason that I have all of these books around me because it's just like brings me joy and also anytime that I want to reread them I can do that so anyway this was a quick video hopefully um and hopefully you enjoyed it I wanted to just you know sort of have a little catch up with all of you um let me know how was your summer what did you read what did you do what did you like sort of enjoy like I went to the beach much much more this year compared to like last year it wasn't as much <laughs> as I wanted it but it still was more um I enjoyed that I went to a couple of concerts um I cooked some good food and just like enjoy my friend's company and so it was like one of those you know sort of summers I would love to hear how was your summer what are you looking forward to for your fall or winter what are your plans if you know what you're going to do to read to achieve and with that being said I hope you enjoyed this video until the next time happy reading